Now while that is in the autoclave, we'll get our materials ready. In this case, we need petri dishes with large 100mm and small 60mm dishes. We'll be using this hood, which is called the laminar flow hood. We need to turn the lights on, and do not touch the blower that stays on all the time. These are found under the table. Cover the surface with ethanol, and we need to allow for the contact time, so we just let it evaporate, don't wipe it off. So now we want to prep our hands. So you should wash your hands ahead of time, but you may have touched things be um, between that, so now we should put some ethanol on our hands and rub it in, and allow it to evaporate. On your petri dish bags, you want to tear up the top at the seam. There's a garbage can behind you. Then invert it and remove the sleeve. 100 millimeter petri dishes are less likely to fall over when you do this, but still be careful. I like to fold the sleeve and put it to the side. And now so that we don't accidentally knock it over, I like to split it into two smaller stacks. So now we can see that the autoclave is done. It says cycle complete. Sure to use lots of force and not slam it again. And this one has a little bit more steamy, so I'm using the gloves to help protect my hands. Careful to not slam it. So now, ooh, these are pretty hot, so we should use some gloves. Hold the bottle and then tighten them down. This prevents room air that may be contaminated from flowing into the bottle as it cools. Now these are going to go on the stir plate, and we can bring it to the hood. If you're putting in antibiotics or any other ingredient, you likely want to cool the bottle to 60 degrees first. We can see that it is still boiling, uh, which is not because it's at boiling temperature, but because it is under vacuum because we sealed it earlier. We want to sterilize any tools that we're using in the hood. In this case, this is an automated pipetter. And once we open the bottle, we'll notice that it does rapidly stop boiling. And we put the tape on top and are putting the lid to the side. Next, we need to put a stereological pipette. These are located uh, above the stir plates on the left side. You want to secure it in, and then you can look at the guide and change it so it is, shows the numbers that you want to see. I prefer to have the bold numbers on the left side, at least where I can view them. So this, we are going to take up liquid using the up and down buttons on the trigger of the pipetter, and then we're going to use it to fill the plates. We're being careful to not touch the inside of the plate and to move it using the lid. Here's an up-close shot of what we're doing. So I'm depositing 20 milliliters of media and then removing any bubbles with the tip of the pipetter. String it around and then putting it to the side. This is a sped up video of me doing multiple plates. So generally we can arrange them three or four deep. We want to have the lids adjacent so that um, the air coming out of the hood helps to cool them down. It's important to remember that the sterile air from this hood is coming out towards you, so you do not want to have anything contaminated interrupting that flow. With 60 millimeter plates, I tend to arrange them in rows of six and then put 10 milliliters of media in each. Therefore, we can take up 30 mils and fill three plates. Same applies for making sure that it fills the bottom and popping any bubbles that you shall see. So any leftover that we have from one bottle, we can transfer to the other. Again, making sure to put the tape on top, indicating that we have opened it. The empty bottle, we're going to want to fill with water right away to make sure that no agar has solidified on the inside. So fill with water, 
check it out. And then we can come back to it. So after they have cooled, which generally you can see a change in the opacity of the media, we want to put all the lids on, making sure to go from the back to the front. And then we'll stack them up. Generally, how high you can stack them depends on the space in the fridge. After you fill all of your plates, you want to put the stereological pipette back in its original uh, paper housing, put a lid on the media bottle, and then we're going to put the stereological pipette in one of the designated containers and fill up the media bottle with water like we did the other one. I'm going to catch the magnet as it comes out, and we'll put it back in the bottle. These will then go to under the dishwasher, where we'll remove the magnets and the caps and put the bottle separately. Next, we want to make our labels for these. So this is tape where I folded over the end like I did previously. And we're going to put the media type, the date that it was made, And who did it? I use JUL as my uh, sign. Additionally, for any plates that you did not use, you can put the sterile um, label, date, and name. So for a stack of plates, open up the bottom of the sleeve and place them over the top. If you do not have enough sleeves, there are extra ones in the culture room generally um, in the drawer labeled Petri dish bags. So this is my style of folding it. You may use your own, but this is one that we have found that works well. You do that, fold it like a present, and put a piece of tape over top. As always, we want to clean up as we go. So spray down your surface, put, down, or put away any uh, utensils that you've used, and we're going to take the pipetter with us. Turn the lights off and leave the ethanol uh, to stay for its contact time. Now we need to put the media away, so find space in the fridge. We want to keep them upright because this avoids them getting contaminated. Because we generally lose some media um, in the autoclave, you won't get as many plates as you expect, so maybe plan for about 20 mils less. Plug in the pipetter and put it back on the shelf. Put away any sterile plates in the containers that you got them from.